there's some basic assumptions that Marita makes. You can agree or disagree with these basic assumptions, that's up to you, but these are the basic assumptions that we need to understand in order to understand the sort of the basic idea within Marita therapy. So the first thing we can see is that feelings are natural. Uh, you know, the question of acceptance to non-judgment, possibly, but you know what? what? Who cares if you judge? You can judge your own feeling states. You can dislike them. You can like them. And that's not what matters because you can have a feeling state. You can not like that feeling state and still accept the fact that you have that feeling state that you don't like. We can still label it as bad because I cannot control how you label your own feeling states, right? If you are that good at non-judgment, then you know maybe you're a better Buddhist <laughs> than I am, but that's okay, that's okay. The point is we still accept this is the reality, whether I like it or not, that's okay. That's the reality. And then we need to refocus attention on eventually what we can control. So that goes back to these basic theories. So again, the first basic theory is feelings are natural, right? That is a part of, again, welcome to being a human. I, I say this in my clinic probably three times a day, <laughs> okay? Feelings are also uncontrollable, right? We cannot control through our mental process, our mental will alone, how we feel. That's the basic premise of Marita therapy. If you can, then don't need Marita therapy. One of the other things that we can see is that emotions will gradually fade away in a parabola if allowed to run their course. So basically that means when we have a situation that induces anxiety, depression, whatever it happens to be, for most people over time, there's a decay in that, in that feeling, unless it's re-triggered, right? There can always be re-triggering of an emotional state, right? So let's say, you know, I'll give you an example. And this is maybe 10 years ago. I don't remember exactly what it was. Um, one of my first teaching trips to Germany, I was staying with um, one of the organizers uh, and uh, he's a great guy. And they had a, uh, a rescue Rottweiler, beautiful dog, an older Rottweiler. And, you know, I've been around dogs my whole life. I, I should have known better, but what I did when, you know, went to the house, I bent over and I, I was just going to pet the dog and say hi, but I bent over the dog was lying down. I bent over the dog and reached down to touch it on the head and the dog jumped up and bit my face basically, right? Luckily the dog didn't really, it was more of a warning shot, shot across the bow. And there wasn't a whole lot. I mean, the dog didn't grab, but the dog just went, and so I had black and blue. So that was one of my first teaching. I have pictures of me standing near the Rhine river, this black and blue eye, because this dog bit my face, right? And after that, I really was very skittish around dogs. You know, even my brother's dog, I remember, I didn't want to be around the dog. It induced a fear in me. And that fear was simply a result of my experience with this dog. And I, I knew it wasn't rational because I knew it was my fault and this is not a typical reaction. Uh, but yet, despite the fact that I could rationalize it and understand why it happened, it didn't change the fact that I felt scared of it, right? Over time, that fear, and I mean, I didn't fear dogs enough that I had that ran, ran screaming from them. But over time, I remember I have patients with seeing eye dogs that come in. After that event, even the seeing eye dog came in, I didn't want to pet them. I had this visceral reaction that, and I've been around these dogs, dogs are not going to bite me, but I had this visceral reaction, right? And so over time, however, that fear continued to get better and better and better. And then as I started petting dogs more, touching dogs, being around dogs more, it eventually decayed into nothing. So that's an example of, you know, unless, so the emotional state peaks and then eventually declines over time. That's a natural state of being for humans, right? Uh, I won't give any other political examples <laughs> because we don't need to make any commentary. So unless I would be bitten again by a dog, it might be re-triggered, but as long as it wasn't re-triggered, eventually that emotion will fade. That's something that's also built into us as humans for the most part. 
So emotions level off and then fade away once we become, uh, once they reach a peak. That's one of the basic theories. Emotional intensity diminishes also when we become accustomed to a specific sensation, right? So let's say, uh, you know, I was trained as a professional musician um, at Oberlin Conservatory. There are a lot of people, the first time they go on stage, they're really anxious, right? Some people, the first time they go on stage, it's really rough for them. You know, I remember being very young, first time playing in, in a concert in front of people, first time I had to play a solo piece. I remember being scared like crazy and I, I couldn't start, right? I couldn't really, I couldn't even start. And then like, I, I, I finally got in there, but I was like frozen for a second. Every time I got on the stage after that, I can still have anxiety because I have to perform Right. Same thing. First time you're teaching in front of a group, maybe there's anxiety because you have to perform. And what is that anxiety? That anxiety is the desire to do well, which is a manifestation of the desire to live. It's an uncomfortable feeling state, but it's nothing more than what other people would label. Yeah, it's a good thing. When I'm a teacher, I want to prepare. I want to do well so I can give you a good class. Or if I'm a musician, I want to play. I want to play well so it's a good performance. But that anxiety over, gee, what if I don't do well, right? that fear of fear of failure, failure is nothing more than a desire to really do well, right? However, the more you get used to doing something, the lower the intensity becomes, right? So if any of you have been a teacher for a long time or, or think about the first time you treated an acupuncture patient when you were first in practice, most of you probably had some sort of sense of, well, gee, I really, what should I do with this patient? And it's not because you're scared for a bad reason. You're scared because you want to do well for that patient. You want to perform well to make that patient better, right? You may get this even with really complex cases that come into your clinic today, or when the patient, we all get it to some extent. You know, if anyone here says you never get nervous when the patient calls you and said, I didn't get any better from your treatment, then you're a much better person than I am because we all experience this. But once you've been in practice for a longer period of time, the intensity of that response diminishes, right? Because you're used to it. So the emotional intensity diminishes when we get used to a certain sensation. We also become, go down to the last one, we become accustomed to feelings garnered from experience. So one of the other basic concepts in Merida therapy is that we get good at what we practice, okay? So if every time, let's say you get scared before you go on to st on a stage, let's say the first time you're about to go on a stage to perform, you say, I can't do it. And you don't do it, right? Every time you don't do it, that feeling and that intensity of that fear and that desire not to do it gets more and more and more and we get better at not doing it. The more you do something, the better you get at doing it, whether it's good or bad, right? So the more you take a test, the better you will get at handling that emotional response to taking a test. The more you go on stage and you push through that fear, the better you will get at doing that. So one of, that's why one of the things Marita therapy does is it focuses on purposeful action sometimes in spite of the emotional state. What, but we still have to do sort of baby steps.